This video is sponsored by Audible. For a free audiobook, use the link in the description below. Welcome to part 16 of the series where I'm tier ranking all 256 twin-born combinations from Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series. This was originally going to be the final part to this series, but I decided I'll need one more part to rearrange the final tier list. This video would be way too long if I included that in this part. So in this part, I'll be revisiting the compounding twin-born combinations. I don't feel like I did the compounding combinations justice in the first video I did on them. To start off with, let's review exactly how compounding works. I found this really nice slideshow created by user Unhoused Oracle on Reddit. Big shout out to them. So how does compounding work? Part 1, Allomancy for Dummies. The metals in Allomancy do not contain any power themselves. All the power in Allomancy comes from Preservation's Investiture directly. The metal acts kind of like a code or a key that tells Preservation what effect to cause. For example, burning gold tells Preservation to show an auger their past selves. This is why Allomancy works on any planet in the Cosmere, because Preservation's power permeates the spiritual realm. Part 2, Ferrochemy for Dummies. The metals in Ferrochemy also do not contain any power themselves. All the power in Ferrochemy comes from the user's body, so the metal itself acts as a battery essentially. The user converts qualities or attributes into investiture and stores it in metal, and they usually can't store while they sleep. The only ferrochemical attribute that can be stored while sleeping is wakefulness in a bronze mind. The ferrochemist can then draw those stored attributes out at any any rate they choose. It's limited to the amount the ferrochemist has stored, so it's rarely super flashy or spectacular. Part 3 Compounding Compounding is like a glitch in the system. By storing an attribute ferrochemically, like health and gold, you change the gold's code. Instead of telling preservation to show you your past self, it now tells preservation to heal you when you burn it alimantically. Since this comes straight from preservation's investiture, the gold releases a lot more health when burned. This fueling ferrochemy using allomancy is what compounding is. Part 4, Main Use. The main way compounding is used follows these steps. Now the user who created these slides just made up some units for uh, the example, but we know the actual conversion rate, like how much of an attribute you get back when compounding. I'll show you that here. So in the epilogue of the final empire, Sazed is speculating on how compounding would work. So he says, however, if the ferrochemist were also an allomancer, he might be able to burn his own metal storages, releasing the energy within them tenfold. All right, so Sazed is speculating here that a twin-born compounding a ferrochemical attribute would get 10 times that attribute back when they compound. And then in the Alloy of Law, Chapter 11, Wax says something similar. He says, but it's the compounding that makes Miles so powerful. If your Allomancy and Ferrochemy share a metal, you can access its power tenfold. With that in mind, we'll go through these steps. So you fill a gold mine with 10 units of health. You can then burn that gold mine allomantically in response receive 100 units of health. And when you receive those 100 units of health, you can store those 100 units of health into a new gold mine. You can then tap that new gold mine as needed, or you could choose to burn that new gold mine and get 10 times that 100 units of health, giving you 1,000 units of health. So just repeat process when you run low on health. And then you basically have infinite health as long as you have enough gold to use as gold mines. All right, there we go. Now we know how compounding functions. So let's get into this tier ranking. Every name for these compounder types comes from the Mistborn Adventure Game rulebook, by the way. Also keep in mind that for this part, I'm tier ranking these uh, going up against each other, but their positioning will probably change when I rearrange the final tier list. They might all make it to busted tier. We'll see. The first compounder type we have is Pure Mind. Pure Mind Twinborn can use their Alimantic Aluminum to wipe the internal Alimantic reserves of themselves, and they can use their Ferrochemical Aluminum to store identity. Pure Mind Twinborn have the reputation of being self-made, self-assured, and usually rich. That's a weird reputation. I don't really understand the usually rich part especially. I think this is probably the weakest of all the compounding twinborn. Their alimantic aluminum is pretty useless most of the time because they can't burn any other alimantic metals, so there's no point to trying to wipe the internal alimantic reserves. Uh, it is useful in some niche circumstances if external investiture is being used on them, they can probably burn their aluminum and get rid of the external investiture. And ferrochemical 
aluminum stores identity. This is one of the metals that we really don't know much about. We know it's used in the creation of unkeyed and unsealed metal mines, but you have to have access to other types of ferrochemical abilities as well. Just being able to store and tap identity on its own seems pretty much useless. If anything, it would be negative because if you're storing your identity, you're more prone to things like emotional allomancy. So your mind is going in D tier because I also don't think that compounding your identity would have any good use. Now that I think about it though, if you are constantly reinforcing your identity because you have virtually unlimited identity, then maybe you would be impossible to manipulate with emotional allomancy. Maybe external investiture wouldn't even work on you at all. I don't really know though. That's all speculation to be honest. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Next up, we have Sated. Sated Twinborn can use their allomantic bend alloy to speed up time in a bubble around themselves. And they can use their ferrochemical bend alloy to store energy. That energy is stored in the form of either calories or liquids. You just have to use a separate bend alloy mind for each. And since they can compound their ferrochemical bend alloy, they can have a virtually unlimited supply of calories and liquid. Sated Twinborn have the reputation of being ascetic loners. Maybe they could go off and just live in a cave in the wilderness. And since they would never need to leave to eat or drink, they could just stay in there and be a hermit their whole life if they wanted to. I don't really see how that would combine well with Alimantic Bend Alloy. I mean, I guess they could just stay in their speed bubble for extended periods and never have to leave even for food or drink. Yeah, I don't know. It's not a very powerful ability to be able to compound Bend Alloy. And I don't think these two abilities have great synergy. Compared to the other compounding types though, it's not that great. I'm gonna put it in C tier for now. Next up, we have Cooler. Cooler Twinborn can use their Alimantic Brass to soothe emotions and they can use their Ferrochemical Brass to store warmth. Cooler Twinborn have the reputation of chills, hot tempers, and bodies. All right, so the cooler can compound their ferrochemical brass and have virtually unlimited warmth. Uh, what can you do with virtually unlimited warmth? Well, you might be able to heat your body up to the point where you could start fires uh, by touching things. That would be pretty cool. But there is this wob to consider. The questioner asked Brandon, if a ferrochemist can store warmth and you can compound, could they harm themselves by drawing too much warmth? And Brandon says, this is harder to do than you think because built into ferrochemy is the natural body's resistance to things you're doing, but it is possible. So a cooler twin born compounding their ferrochemical brass to have virtually unlimited warmth, they could possibly hurt themselves and maybe even kill themselves if they compound too much of that. But since they have that natural resistance, they might still be able to get to the temperatures that you would be able to use as a weapon, for instance, or to start fires. Uh, these two powers don't really have synergy, but I think that compounding ferrochemical brass and having a huge store of warmth is pretty good if you could use it as a weapon. Um, for now, I'm going B tier with the cooler. Next up, we have Sleepless. No, not that type of Sleepless. Sleepless Twinborn can use their Alimantic Bronze to hear Alimantic pulses, and they can use their Ferrochemical Bronze to store wakefulness. Sleepless have the reputation of being overstimulated and overly sensitive. Okay, so they can compound their bronze and have a virtually unlimited supply of wakefulness, so they could go their whole life without needing to sleep. That's really cool. I actually would love to be a sleepless because if there's one thing that I wish I could change about the human experience, it would be to get rid of the need to sleep. I could imagine a sleepless twin born being the type of person to be a vigilante and just constantly seeking out rogue alamancers or rogue users of investiture in general. Because with alamantic bronze, you can actually sense any type of kinetic investiture, not just alamancy. So I could see a sleepless just going from city to city, never sleeping, constantly hunting down whatever type of alamancer they consider a threat. I would hate to get on a sleepless's bad side. They'd be relentless in chasing you and learning about you. I'm putting sleepless pretty high. They're going in S tier for me. Next up, we have Chrysalis. Chrysalis Twinborn can use their alamantic cadmium to slow down time and a bubble around themselves, and they can use their ferrochemical cadmium to store breath. Chrysalis Twinborn have the reputation of being able to endure dire situations until things improve. So by compounding their ferrochemical cadmium, they could build up a unlimited supply of breath. They just have to have enough cadmium. And I'm not gonna factor in the cost of these metals because I'm ranking the powers themselves regardless of what era they're living in, pretty much. Yeah, whenever they use their alimantic cadmium, they throw up a speed bubble around themselves and everything outside of that bubble from their perspective moves rapidly. I don't really see 
how using their ferrochemical cadmium would help them or benefit that in any way, uh, unless they were like underwater while they had their alimantic cadmium up. Now, ferrochemical cadmium can also be used to highly oxygenate your blood when you tap it. So if you have virtually an unlimited supply of breath and you can just constantly be oxygenating your blood, you could be extremely athletic. So I could see a chrysalis twinborn being a phenomenal athlete. Also, if they got into like a fist fight or something, they'd probably do pretty good. As long as they knew the basics of what they were doing, they would have crazy stamina. I don't think it would change too much of of a person's day-to-day -day life because how often do you go where you need to hold your breath? I mean, if somebody's trying to like strangle you, then I guess that would be extremely useful. But how often does that happen? Not that often. For me, Chrysalis is gonna have to go in A tier. Next up, we have Ringer. Ringer Twinborn can use their Alimantic Chromium to wipe the Alimantic reserves of a target and they can use their Ferrochemical Chromium to store fortune. Ringers have the reputation of being incredibly unfairly lucky. So they would have a basically an unlimited supply of fortune, whatever that means. If we go by the Ars Arcanum, it says that it means you're storing luck. So you're unlucky when you're storing, you're more lucky when you're tapping. But we know that fortune in the Cosmere is used for other things, like the shards use it when they're viewing the permutations of future possibilities, and Hoyd uses it to end up where he needs to be at the right time. I'm going by the Ars Arcanum's definition for this tier list, so we'll assume that the ringer can have unlimited luck. If that's the case, then a ringer who has unlimited luck could basically stumble through life, constantly tapping their fortune, and everything would work out for them. They could just pick random numbers on the lottery, get rich overnight, probably just run into a dangerous situation, like maybe a huge brawl, and they could just stumble at the right time and dodge punches. If they ever get into a fight, they could also use their Alimantic Chromium to be wiping the reserves of that target. So that basically just wipes any investiture that that person has. So this is an extremely good compounding type. It's so good that it's gonna be in the busted tier. Oh, and one more thing on Ringer. If Ferrochemical Chromium doesn't store luck and it instead stores whatever the shards use to see the future, then it would still be extremely good and I think it would still deserve the busted tier status because they could just be constantly tapping their Chromium and seeing all the different permutations of the future nonstop. Next up, we have Copper Keep. Copper Keep Twinborn can use their Alimantic Copper to hide Alimantic Pulses, and they can use their Ferrochemical Copper to store memories. Copper Keeps have the reputation of having creepily good memories. This is one of the most confusing compounder types, because what does it mean to compound copper and get more memories out of your stored memories? <laughs> it doesn't really make that much sense, because memories are discrete, right? You place a memory into your copper mind and it's out of your own mind. And then you can pull that memory back out of the copper mind into your mind at a later time. It's not like an attribute that you can multiply. So I wanna look at some of the comments that you guys left on the first compounding video. There were different ideas of what compounding copper would mean. The Natalist said, Copper is like cut and paste for memory. Compounding copper is like copy and paste, so you retain the memory and are able to store it. This would be useful for unkeyed metal mines. You could make a copper mine printing press, storing the same info over and over. Ah, I actually kind of like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool if it worked that way. Michael Smith 6803 says, I imagine a copper compounder can store the memories of a burning metal mine in multiple copper mines at the same time, creating copies of stored knowledge. See, that would be really cool too. It's kind of the same thing as the copper mine printing press, I guess, if they were unkeyed. That might make sense. Maybe you burn your copper mine and you get 10 versions of that memory and you could store each one of those 10 in their own copper mine. All right, Mac May said something very similar. Uh, you might be able to make 10 copies of the memory uh, and then store it, basically storing it 10 times over. Okay, here's something that's interesting. Squiggle says, I think when you tap a compounded memory, you get better remembering idness. <laughs> you get a more detailed recollection. Like details become clearer. You remember every aspect photographically. You remember the smell, etc. All right. And then Tuesday 424 said something similar. Uh, and he actually pulled a quote. So here's the quote. Uh, Breeze says, he means that the ministry is watching for him. He pretended to be a nobleman and they found out. Doxon nodded. The Lord ruler himself saw me on one occasion and he's got a flawless memory. All right. 
So the Lord Ruler was reputed to have a flawless memory. Maybe that's due to him compounding his memories. Tuesday goes on to say, since compounding involves burning the metal mind with the stored memories, I expect that this causes one to remember these memories perfectly in their own brain, similar to how the metal mind holds the memories perfectly before it's tapped. Okay, so as you can see, there's a few different speculative ideas on how compounding copper would function. So either way, it's going to increase your memory a lot. You're going to have really, really good memory as long as you have enough copper to continue to store those memories in. Uh, I don't think that combining alimantic copper and ferrochemical copper really have good synergy. I think having a borderline perfect memory would be pretty great though. It's going to go in S tier for me. I don't remember where I ranked these for my first compounding video, so they might be completely different. Next up, we have Friendly. Friendly Twinborn can use their Alimantic Duralumin to enhance the current metal they're burning, and they can use their Ferrochemical Duralumin to store connection. Friendly Twinborn have the reputation of being blissed out likable weirdos. That's kind of weird. Why would they be considered weirdos? I don't really get that. Uh, so if you can compound your Duralumin, as long as you have enough Duralumin to store that connection in, you can have virtually unlimited connection. That's extremely powerful. This might be the most busted of all of the compounding types. You can do so much with connection. Tapping a huge amount of connection would, first of all, let you connect with people, right? You could be, you can make friends extremely easy. They'll basically hang on every word. They'll view you like the most charismatic person ever to exist exist because you pretty much would be. You should also be able to uh, speak the language in any land you're in. And you could probably become an Elantrian. Go to Elantris and connect with the land and you might be able to access Aeondor. Friendlies have basically a useless Alimantic ability, but their ferrochemical ability is so powerful when they can have virtually unlimited connection and vanish at will when you're storing. They have to go busted. I'm putting them all the way at the top of busted. Next up, we have Vision Visionary. Visionary Twinborn can use their Alimantic Electrum to reveal their future, and they can use their Ferrochemical Electrum to store determination. Visionaries have the reputation of sees the future and faces it boldly. All right, so usually I don't like Ferrochemical Electrum very much because you have to be in a depressed state when you're storing, but being able to compound Electrum gets rid of the negative side effect. So you can just have basically unlimited determination, feel on top of the world all the time and never have to go into that depressed state. But I wonder if you constantly feel on top of the world world, would that just become your new baseline and you would no longer feel like you're on top of the world? You would just feel normal after a while? I don't know. And then you can uh, reveal your future with Alimantic Electrum. I think Visionary is going to go at the top of A tier for me. Next up, we have Timeless. Timeless Twinborn can use their Alimantic Gold to reveal their past self and they can use their Ferrochemical Gold to store health. Timeless Twinborn have the reputation of being unkillable, rumored to be immortal. And we've seen a Timeless Twinborn on page. We've seen Miles from Era 2, and he's just constantly tapping health. So he'll do very risky things like jumping off balconies, landing, and his bones will heal as they're breaking. Yeah. Being able to just constantly tap a huge amount of health is awesome. Uh, you'd basically be like Wolverine or Deadpool. So the Timeless's Alimantic ability isn't that great. I mean, Miles barely used it himself. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the Ferrochemical ability is extremely good. I think it has to go in the busted tier. Next up, we have Deader. Deader Twinborn can use their Alimantic Iron to pull metals, and they can use their Ferrochemical Iron to store physical weight. Debtors have the reputation of being notorious for smashing themselves flat. Yeah, so they have the name Debtor for a reason. Yes, you can compound your ferrochemical iron and have virtually unlimited physical weight and become heavier than buildings, things like that. And with that increased weight, you could pull on things like uh, buildings or whatever, like big pieces of metal. But you have to remember that metal is going to be flying at you. Just because you weigh a lot doesn't mean you can't get smashed by what it is you're pulling towards yourself. And also remember the wob that we looked at earlier. Yes, you do get some resistance to whatever attribute you're tapping. But if you tap too much of it, you're still going to injure yourself or kill yourself. So you want to be able to make yourself into a black hole or anything like that. So I think Deader is going at the top of B tier for me. Next, we have Soul Burst. Soul Burst Twinborn can use their Alimantic Nicrosil to enhance the Alimantic burn of a target, and they can use their Ferrochemical Nicrosil to store investiture. Soul Burst's reputation is opens up new possibilities of magic. Hmm, that's 
kind of weird. So that reputation must be going on the assumption that you can store any type of magic in your Nicrosol mind. But you have to remember, you have you need access to that type of magic first before you can store that investiture. And I also think that Ferrochemical Nicrosol doesn't work that way. I think that it lets you store the ability to use a certain type of magic. So for instance, a Soul Burst would be able to store their ability to use Alimantic Nicrosil, but not the actual power that Alimantic Nicrosil gives you. That's just my opinion though. I base it on what we know about the medallions from the Bands of Mourning. But regardless, I don't think this is a great combination because Ferrochemical Nicrosil on its own isn't going to be very useful. Soul Burst is going at the top of D tier. Next up, we have Hefter. Hefter Twinborn can use their Alimantic Pewter to increase physical strength and they can use their Ferrochemical Pewter to store physical strength. Hefter's reputation is lives for physical challenges. This one's an interesting one because the Alimantic ability when you burn pewter increases the attribute that you're able to store in fair chemical pewter. Now, Alimantic pewter does more than just increase your physical st strength. It also increases just your athletic ability in general. It gives you quicker reflexes. You have much greater stamina than the average person. It also makes you tougher. Your sense of balance also improves. But yeah, one of the attributes that increases is physical strength. It doesn't increase it in the same way that fair chemical pewter does. It increases your strength magically. Your muscles don't actually grow. Whereas with ferrochemical pewter, when you store your strength, your muscles atrophy. But when you tap it at a later time, you gain muscle mass. Since a hefter could compound this, they could have unlimited physical strength as long as they had enough pewter. So they could just be always walking around in Hulk mode and just be all massively buff. I think they would still have to be careful to not tap too much strength at once because your muscles would grow to the point where your skin might start ripping like a coloss. And it also makes it difficult to move around if you have too much muscle mass. You're kind of like a giant meatball. Now I've seen some speculation that you might be able to store the magically increased strength that you get from your Alimantic pewter in your ferrochemical pewter mind and then compound that. So you could just have unlimited Alimantic pewter strength where your muscles don't grow, but you're just super strong, like a superhuman. And there's actually a paraphrased wob on this. Brandon said, Alimantic pewter strength can be stored in a metal mind, but it's probably easier to just compound. And I couldn't find information on anything else. The only person that we've seen on page that has both Alimantic pewter and ferrochemical pewter is the Lord Ruler. And I did find a few descriptions. It's not definitive that he was tapping pewter here, but this is what it says. So this is when Vin is fighting him and sees uh, his cloak get ripped off and she sees his back for the first time. Nothing. A normal if muscular back. Unlike the Inquisitors, the Lord Ruler didn't have a spike driven through his spine. And then later in the book, we have this. This is Vin thinking about the Lord Ruler. He looked tired, exhausted even. Not his body. It was still muscular. It was just his air. So we see that the Lord Ruler doesn't increase in size to the point that Seiza did when he fought off Coloss. So we don't really know if he was tapping Pewter here. Maybe he was just tapping Pewter at a low rate because he does look muscular. So maybe he was just tapping it enough to bulk up his muscles slightly, but also he could have been burning Alimantic Pewter at the same time. I, I don't really know. I... I think that you would probably still gain muscle mass when you're tapping your pewter, even if you were storing strength gained from Alimantic pewter. I mean, there is some synergy there. Maybe you could be storing your physical strength and as long as you're burning your Alimantic pewter at the same time, then it would counteract the atrophied muscles. You would still feel strong and normal even though you have atrophied muscles. I'm going to put it in A tier. Next up, we have Swift. Swift Twinborn can use their Alimantic steel to push metals and they can use their ferrochemical steel to store physical speed. Swift Twinborn have the reputation of being fast and destructive, often criminals. All right, so yeah, the Swift can compound their ferrochemical steel and have virtually unlimited physical speed. They could be like the Flash, and they could just be constantly moving at blurring speeds. All right, there is a wob related to this type of compounder. The questioner asked Brandon, my friend wants to know how fast steel compounders would, could possibly go. Can they run up walls or over water like 
like the Flash. Uh, somebody else jokingly says, can they run through time? Brandon says, steel runners can resist a lot of things due to the power, like they can withstand the G's they are going through, but they can't ignore wind resistance and friction. They will burn up if they start running too quickly. Okay, so basically, yeah, the Swift can run and move extremely, extremely fast, but there is a limit where they will injure themselves. Would Alimantic Steel, does that have good synergy with the ability to move super quickly? I mean, I guess it does, right? Like you could run around and just constantly be steel pushing things out of people's hands or be shooting things at them rapidly. I don't know. I think unlimited physical speed is really, really good. I think it needs to go in the busted tier. Next we have Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye Twinborn can use their Alimantic Tin to increase senses and they can use their Ferrochemical Tin to store senses. So this is another one where the Alimantic ability increases the same attribute that you're able to store in your Ferrochemical Metal Mind. Eagle Eyes have the reputation of being inhumanly and often frighteningly perceptive. You can compound your ferrochemical tin and have unlimited senses stored up. With ferrochemical tin, you have to use a different metal mind for each sense that you're storing. Tapping ferrochemical tin mind with eyesight in it works differently than how alimantic tin increases your eyesight. So for ferrochemists, their peripheral vision blurs, but they can see things at a great distance in more detail. I guess it's kind of like looking through binoculars in a way. And then whenever you burn your alimantic tin, you're increasing all of your senses at once. I think. An eagle eye twinborn would be the ideal scout for any team. I don't think this is busted though. I think it's going to go in A tier for me and Chrysalis is dropping down to B tier. The final twinborn type for this part is Mastermind. Mastermind twinborn can use their Alimantic Zinc to riot the emotions of others and they can use their Ferrochemical Zinc to store mental speed. Masterminds have the reputation of can outthink or mess with anyone's head. This is actually a great combination. So normally Ferrochemical Zinc isn't that great because you you have to store your mental speed in order to build up that attribute. You're going to think a lot slower whenever you're storing that speed. But with the ability to compound that mental speed, you can have virtually unlimited mental speed as long as you have enough zinc. You can just be a super genius making connections constantly. Your IQ would be like, I don't know, in the 300s. Like you'd be the smartest person to ever exist. Your thoughts will be moving so quickly. And I know that some people have said that uh, ferrochemical zinc will basically make you like this. I'm doing a thousand calculations per second and they're all wrong. Basically saying that just because you speed up your thoughts doesn't mean that you're going to make connections easier. But I kind of disagree with that because you can be tapping your ferrochemical zinc attribute all the time and you can come to conclusions, realize they're wrong, dismiss them and come up with new conclusions over and over again before the other person comes up with a single conclusion. Like I just don't really see how that couldn't benefit you. Um, and then the ability to also riot the emotions of other people. You can outthink your opponent and you can manipulate them and make them feel a certain type of way to make them more influenced by you. Mastermind is really good. I think it has to go in busted tier. All right, guys, there's my final tier ranking for the revisited compounder types. There's only one more part to this series and I really mean it this time. In that final part, I'm going to sort through the different tiers of this compiled tier list of all 256 twinborn types and I'll come up with my final tier ranking. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when the final part drops. Also, be sure to get a free audiobook and take advantage of the offer that today's sponsor, Audible, is offering. All you have to do is use the link in the description below and sign up for an Audible Premium Plus 30-day free trial. Audible will then give you a credit and you can use this credit to get any audiobook you want absolutely free. Being an Audible member also gives you access to the Audible Plus catalog, which is a huge catalog catalog of other audiobooks and podcasts all available to Audible members. It's a really good deal, so make sure you take advantage of it and use the link below. That's it for this video guys, I'll see you in the final part. <laughs>